Namaskar. Thank you so much for tuning into Desi Plaza TV. I am Karishma Himmat Singhani. The guest today in our studio needs no introduction. He is, according to me, champion of champions, a one-man army, a, a Rajya Sabha member, um, ex-commerce minister in Indian government, um, a professor, a PhD from Harvard, and so many things, and of course, now working as a lawyer. It's our pleasure and honor to welcome Dr. Swami here in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Swami, it's an honor to be able to speak to you. Thank you so much for giving us your valuable time. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So we are really looking forward to hear you uh, for your lectures. You're touring USA with your, um, this time the lectures are on your, the cases that you're fighting, uh, especially on Ram Mandir and on um, National Herald case, and of course on Chidambarams. So would you like to shed some light on your speech tonight? Well, in this uh, particular speech uh, uh, in uh, Dallas, uh, is different from the other speeches. I think in Atlanta it was on economics, mm -hmm. the economy of India. Uh, in Chicago it was on uh, the uh, Hindu uh, identity and uh, its global relevance. And mm -hmm. in uh, in uh, San Jose, California, it was much more to do with uh, the international environment in which India is. <clears throat> so uh, the topics are varied here. As you mentioned, the topics will deal with my court cases. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll broadly give uh, what the case is, how it became a case, and w at what stage it is, and when to expect a result. So I would like to ask what stage it is on. And uh, I have a second part of this question, that uh, according to you, what will be, what is the aftermath of the decision? What will be the challenges that government of India will face after the decision, implementing that decision? Well, the, as far as the cases of uh, the National Herald, in which Ms. Sonia Gandhi is the accused and Rahul Gandhi is the accused and two, uh, four other uh, Congress-associated persons mm -hmm. like uh, Sam uh, Petroda mm -hmm. and um, Suman Dubey, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, Motilal Vora and um, uh, Oscar Fernandez, mm -hmm. uh, who are general secretaries of, and treasurer of the party. So there, uh, I'm uh, sure that uh, we have reached, a, we have crossed the critical stage of my proving that there is a prima facie case. Yes. Now I have to prove uh, beyond reasonable doubt that they are guilty mm -hmm. of serious crimes like criminal breach of trust, uh, criminal misappropriation of property, mm -hmm. and uh, 420, mm -hmm. that is fraud, mm -hmm. uh, cheating. And these uh, have to uh, uh, prove beyond reasonable doubt so that they can be sentenced to terms in jail. And uh, there, uh, the, we are now at a critical stage where I have sought from the court documents with the government. Mm -hmm. And they, they should come next month. And then uh, after that, the trial will begin. Uh -huh. And I expect uh, that by next uh, April, May, uh, we should have a decision. So I think this aftermath question is more critical in terms of Ram Temple Ayodhya decision. Um, what would you like to say on that? I would think, no, on the contrary, they, they, there can be some uh, lawlessness by congressmen in the case of the National Herald case, in case Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, because they are in effect, their party is over yes. uh, if they are both go to jail. Uh, because they have so much centralized the party that once they took go, nobody will be able to take it. Maybe Congress will break up into three, four pieces. Mm -hmm. But as far as Ram Temple is concerned, there will be no aftermath. Yes. Uh, because, yes, because the Muslim community is re reconciled to the fact that we are not against building a masjid, but we say you can't build a masjid in where Ram was born mm -hmm. and the Ram Janmabhumi, uh, which belonged to the temple. Mm -hmm. uh, you can build somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, before they built a masjid, there was a temple. That has been proved by Archaeological Survey of India. So they, um, only the, those who are stand to gain by getting the property 
and that is the Sunni Waqaf board. Yes. They are the ones who are putting, uh, fight, putting up a fight, <coughs> saying this is our property, mm -hmm. which we cannot accept. Mm -hmm. uh, but the general Muslim population is quite happy if you build a masjid somewhere else uh -huh. and uh, let the Hindus have Ram Janma Bhumi. Well, I'm into that. <laughs> and um, th that leads to my uh, second question automatically, you know, I mean, um, uh, you are fighting cases, you know, that are like awesome. I mean, you know, you are an economist, you know, and uh, we all were expecting that once Modi government takes in, you know, we will see you as a, you know, finance minister or, you know. So you have taken up a totally different role altogether. But uh, you've been very vocal about the current economic situation and the changes or the big bang reforms that uh, Modi government has done. And now a few other leaders are also coming up. So what do you have to say about that, about the recent, the present economic situation in India? See, since I was a professor of economics, it would not have been proper for me to speak uh, about the economy earlier. Because it, <coughs> it would have meant, you know, because no economist is satisfied with anybody else's economic handling. So it would mean that I would have been criticizing the finance minister that he's not doing this, he's not doing that. And that uh, was, uh, you know, would cause unpleasantness. But uh, last May I began to feel that now we are heading for a crisis. Mm -hmm. So I wrote Prime Minister a 16-page letter with uh, facts taken, data taken from the government's own publication. Mm -hmm and showed that uh, uh, we are now heading for a crisis mm -hmm. and he ought to take steps to improve the situation. And I released it only uh, last week mm -hmm. and it suddenly caught fire. Then so many other people started talking about it too. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, all told, um, the, my contribution uh, in, the fight, in the fight for corruption in the fight for Hindutva, mm -hmm. have been, for the party, very beneficial. Mm -hmm. That's why the RSS is uh, supporting uh, every program that I am doing, because that is the base of the party. Yes. That's the identity of the party. Economy can be fixed. And um, I, I have proposed these rectifications and the corrections to Modi, and I hope that Modi will take it up. But uh, I'm frankly of the view that the, the finance minister uh, has uh, frittered away the uh, mandate we had got. And so we have to rebuild the mandate. So we are just two years away from the election again, you know. And um, how do you see Modi government going into that election, you know, with economy in this situation, joblessness? And GST has kind of annoyed the 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 traders community actually most. So what will be your suggestion to the Modi government that, you know, what could be that one quick fix that they can do, you know, getting into the election? I think uh, two quick fixes can set things right. One is abolish income tax. Mm -hmm. And the people immediately get relief. Yes. And instead of telling them you have to wait, it will filter down, mm -hmm. all that, you know, uh, they will have no patience for that. Mm -hmm. So this one happens immediately, they are, all the harassment is gone, all the paperwork is gone, mm -hmm. and uh, all the corruption is gone because these income tax inspectors are also become very corrupt. And the other thing is to lower the interest rate to 9% from the present uh, 14%. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you do that, the small medium industries will become rejuvenated mm -hmm. and the growth cycle will start and the employment, much of the employment in our country is generated by either agriculture yeah. or by small and medium industries. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, 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 they will get a boost. Mm -hmm. So these are two things which can uh, save Modi for uh, 2019. So if I may ask you, um, whatever work Modi government has done so far, like three years, how will you analyze it? You know, what is the strongest point of Modi government and what is the weakest point, according to you, Modi government? Well, our strongest point is that uh, there has been no allegation of corruption against our government. Mm -hmm. This is the first time in our history. 
uh, even Jawaharlal Nehru's government, uh, where there was so much euphoria, had uh, jeep scandal and then uh, f a food scandal of uh, Rafi Ahmed Kidwai. So there were all kinds of uh, scandal and allegations being made. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Indira Gandhi's, of course, uh, there was this uh, Mundra scandal, mm -hmm. and then of course she li Pondicherry license scandal, so on. So there's one big uh, thing that people now accept that uh, BJP government is relative more honest than mm -hmm. previous thing. And the second uh, thing is that there has been great achievements on uh, on Hindutva principles. Mm -hmm. uh, the and we have, in fact, co-opted a large section of the minorities also with the Hindus because uh, women, particularly of the Muslim community, uh -huh. have benefited greatly by our stand that triple talaq must be abolished. Uh, then the f feeling that Ram Temple is coming up, a yeah. lot of excitement about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Ram Setu also had, from Supreme Court, got it saved from being demolished. Mm -hmm. So like that... Um, uh, I think these are the two strong things. The weakest uh, part of our performance has been the economy. And uh, there, uh, I think we now need to focus our attention. Which is an irony because um, Modi government came with the agenda of Vikas. Yeah, that's right. They get uh, governance. But see, the prime minister relies on his ministers to do it. Yeah. The team is very strong. Uh, yeah. And the team he has chosen hasn't delivered. Uh, what can he do? Yes, he should get a new team. Uh -huh. <laughs> so do we have any chances to seeing the new team? I don't know. The, the Modi decides, I mean, it's up to him. Okay. Because he, 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 there's no need for any of us to tell him because he knows yeah. the mood today is very upset. The people are very upset. And uh, it's, uh, somebody new has to come and help him out and to put the matter on, on the rails again. Uh -huh. Uh, coming to uh, the relatively, as people are saying, uh, Modiji's uh, stronger point, that is the foreign policy. What is your analysis of the present Indo-US policy and how it has the impact on our relationship with, say, China or even Russia? Well, most of Modi's foreign policy successes are more his personal ambiance and uh, atmospherics. Uh, but uh, in terms of solid uh, support mm -hmm. and uh, solid backing for India, there we have not yet concretized it. In the United States uh, matter, the most important thing the United States now needs is somebody to help them out to disengage from, say, the Indian Ocean, Afghanistan, and somebody else has to fill the gap and it can't be China. Yeah. It has to be some other democratic country. And so the Americans are very keen that we send troops to yeah. Afghanistan. We send battleships to the Indian Ocean to mm -hmm. monitor it. And the Indian government has still not been ready for that. Okay. And therefore, our relations with America is still basically in terms of a lot of goodwill, mm -hmm. but in terms of concrete cooperation and so on, it is limited. So, you, you've been an expert in India-China policy, yes. you know, what is your take on that, the present situation? Right now it's very tense between the two of us. Uh, it's uh, soured because we took a very pro-Japanese stand at one yeah. stage. And, uh, and then uh, the Chinese are always looking for, um, from their point of view, uh, some a stand of India which is, which is good for them. And in particular today, they want us to be neutral between the Chinese and the Americans. And they appear, they think that we have gone too much to the American side. So that's the issue. Uh -huh. But we have taught the Chinese a lesson to this extent that we didn't yield on Lokala. Yes. And uh, we took a tough stand yeah. and we are ready to fight a war and uh, they now know that India is no more 1962. Yes. It's a new India. Mm -hmm. And uh, they run the risk of losing a battle with us. So that's been a great gain mm -hmm. because the Chinese have now since then become conciliatory on many issues. Mm -hmm. But we want them to 
be sympathetic to us in our dealings with Pakistan, mm -hmm. because Pakistan is the hotbed of terrorism in India, mm -hmm. and therefore we have to teach Pakistan a lesson. And if the Chinese are neutral, it becomes very easy to do it. Yes. So that's something that we are working on. Coming to um, the home again, um, we've been facing, we have the biggest example what has been happening in West Bengal because of the refugees in it. And then um, to a certain extent, even Kerala, you know, the demographic changes, the conversions, you know, and now this Rohingya Muslims. Uh, what is your take on that? How, how does Modi government plan to, you know, tackle this problem because it seems like a menace and you know it's like how do we correct it well as far as Rohingyas, uh, Rohingyas are concerned it's already been decided by government and correctly mm -hmm. that we will not allow them to come here yeah. and that those who have illegally come in the past like about 40,000 yes. of them will eject them uh -huh. uh, by, by due process mm -hmm. so we are clear on that yeah. But uh, in terms of why we are uh, against uh, uh, the demographic changes that are coming, because the, yeah. the Muslims are not practicing family planning, but the Hindus are. Yes. And this has caused the proportion of Muslims to rise. But wherever Muslims are in majority, we find, whether it's in India, or whether in, uh, in India, say in Kashmir or in Kerala, uh, or in uh, foreign countries mm -hmm. uh, where the Muslims are in power, mm -hmm. in majority, they don't uh, practice democracy mm -hmm. and women's rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, the gender equality uh, disappears. So we, in our country, we have, a, we have committed to be a constitutional uh, democracy. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we, we have seen in, in uh, Kashmir where the Muslims are in majority in the valley, they have driven out 250,000 uh, Kashmiri Pandits mm -hmm. who are Hindus. And, uh, and there some seems, seems, seems to have been there, there's no remorse. So that's why I think uh, we have to uh, deal with this problem of Muslim migration in a very decisive way from the point of view of national security. And we are doing it, there is no problem now. But West Bengal looks very, very scary because as if, you know, like, you know, that whole territory, whatever news we hear. West Bengal is not scary. I mean, we are sad that this lady is going to so much appeasement. Yeah. But uh, as a consequence, BJP is gaining. It's now become the number two party. Yeah. So, and before we end, I would like to hear your message for NRIs everywhere else in the world. And of course, through this channel, um, of course, to the Modi government, <laughs> your suggestion. So please, would you like to give your message? No, I, there's nothing. I'm a party man, so there's no form, uh, point in my giving any message mm -hmm. from television. Uh, I can always speak to him directly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we all uh, wish to win the uh, 20, uh, 2019 elections, and I'm sure that even if our economy is in a bad shape, mm -hmm. because of Hindutva and our anti-corruption campaigns, we'll win the elections. We have, we have no problem with that. Uh, but the economy needs, because people should not suffer. So for that, it requires a special attention. But um, uh, I think uh, for those who are Indians who are here, well, I'm glad you're doing so well, and I want you to do better. You're, uh, the succeeding generation of Indians should also be Indians, otherwise the American system will absorb them and they'll soon become Americans and will be forgotten. So therefore, uh, you must, uh, the Indian community must learn Sanskrit, teach their children Sanskrit, uh, participate in festivals, uh, go to temples, and keep your Hindu identity while being loyal American citizens. Because there's never going to be a chance that India and United States are going to have a war with each other. Okay. So the, you will not be in a dilemma ever. Yeah. And therefore, keep your Hindu identity and nurture it. It is always lovely talking to you, Dr. Swami, and we wish you all the luck with all your cases. I know you will always, you've always passed in flying colors. You will pass in flying colors as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope to see you next year. <laughs>